Hey friends, this is the Compass Podcast, where we connect the spiritual to the everyday. My name is Ryan Dunn. Happy Advent to you. Merry Christmas as well. Peace is a popular word this time of year, isn't it? We see it in lights. It's a big theme in our Christian worship experiences. It's a hope that we express for the turning of the new year. But despite peace being such a central aspect of the Christmas season, it can be a struggle for many of us to find peace throughout the days that lead up to the big day on December 25th. In this holiday-shortened episode of Compass, we're going to explore several ways to infuse your holiday season with a connection to God's loving, peaceful spirit. At Christmas, we remember that God entered into human history in order to deliver mercy in peace. That's a cause for celebration. But in our day and age, the celebrating and the corresponding obligations that the celebrating presents, that kind of steals away from some of the peace that we honor in our Christmas remembrances. Instead, it takes some deliberate attention to slowing our paces and opening up space for reflection in order to really encounter some Christmas peace. Now, for centuries, Christians utilized contemplative practices in order to unplug from the chaos or distractions of life. Contemplative practices are simply exercises through which we direct our attention to a given topic or a contemplation. In this case, we want to direct our attention towards the meaning and significance of God's presence represented in the Christmas story. So following our five practices through which we carve out some deliberate time during a busy holiday season and direct our attention towards the spiritual significance of the moment. Let's see if these practices help find some peace this holiday season. All right, so this is how to get contemplative at Christmas. Way number one is actually to use the inconveniences. The lines in the checkout aisle are longer this time of year. Traffic is a little more bountiful this time of year. Your personal calendar may feel a bit tighter. And there are some, of course, looming deadlines before the end of the year. All these are reminders that something special is also happening this time of year. So use the moments of recognizing these inconveniences as reminders that this season is something that is set apart from the rest of the year. So let your wait in line be an invitation to reflect on what has inspired everyone else to come to the store at the exact same time that you came to the store. How is Christ present, or maybe not evidently present, at this moment of waiting? What human longings are reflected in the actions this time of year? How has God responded? And then, well, let that become a prayer. You can also, this is way number two, turn the preparation into prayer. Things like hanging lights or decorating a tree, baking cookies, they can be highly contemplative acts as they are all acts of preparation. As you move through these acts of preparation, prayerfully consider your hopes for this season. Turn these hopes into prayers as you tell God about your longings for Christmas time. And let the time of preparation be an opportunity for listening too. Like, what is God saying during this time of preparation? Way number three might be to practice a little bit of fasting. <laughs> you know, our biggest complaint leading into Christmas is often centered on the season's consumerism. As Charlie Brown noted, Christmas has gone commercial. Good grief, right? Well, rebel against the commercialism of the season by refraining from consuming or giving something up. Give up listening to the radio while you commute and see how that opens you up to moments of contemplation. Don't give up listening to podcasts, though. Not recommended. <laughs> or give up sweets until Christmas Day and see how that anticipation heightens your, your sense of participation in the season. And then the sweetness of rejoicing when Christmas Day does actually come. Another practice you might want to try is to read a little of Luke 1 and 2 every day. The narrative of Luke chapters 1 and 2 reflect a lot of anticipation and longing. How are you like the people in the story. Are we still waiting for what they were waiting for? How have you seen what they hoped for delivered? And then finally, consider the images of the season. 
If you've ever been to an Eastern Orthodox church of some kind, you've likely noted the prevalence of icons. These are images of significant saints or biblical characters. And their use is tied to the idea that God, who is bodiless, took on a physical form in Jesus in order to unite humanity and the divine. Our Christmas season is rich in imagery from lights to greenery. And much like the icons of the Orthodox tradition, these can be a reminder of God's holy presence. The images that we see in the Christmas season are reminders of a special spirit of the season. So what might these images represent? What inspires our use of stars and angels this time of year, <laughs> or, or even reindeer at this particular time? How are they adding to the meaning of this season? A great way to kind of engage in the imagery of the season is through our Advent Photo a Day Challenge. You can see what participants are posting, and of course, you can still participate, never too late to join in. So check out umc.org slash photo a day to jump in on that. And I'd love to hear your reactions to these practices or our other recommended spiritual practices and contemplative exercises that we present on Compass or through the Rethink Church website. Of course, if you think that this is all nonsense, uh, I invite you to um, to email Michelle Maldonado. She'd love to hear from you. Just kidding. Uh, you can email both of us at rethinkchurch at umcom.org. The Compass Podcast, that being said, is brought to you by United Methodist Communications. That's the UMCOM part of that email address. If Compass is meaningful for you, then check out another episode. You would enjoy using your imagination in prayer. That was episode number 95. Or you might want to check out Meditative Practices for Daily Disruptions from May of 2021. That outlines another contemplative practice called the Welcoming Prayer. And then while you're listening, leave a rating and or review. Compass comes out every other Wednesday, unless we're interrupted by a holiday, which is actually the case coming up. So we'll be back with a fresh episode of Compass on January 10th of 2024. I look forward to talking to you then. Peace. Happy holidays to you in the meantime.